using theory of terms in a dynamic regression model is a really useful way for dealing with some types of seasonality. Uh, for example, you can deal with any length seasonality, uh, including hourly data with length 24 or even hourly data with an annual seasonality with a very long period. You can deal with data with more than one seasonal period uh, by putting inferior terms of different frequencies. And uh, it means that anything, any of the short-term dynamics that are not handled by the regression terms can be handled with a relatively simple um, error. It means that the seasonal pattern is smooth, um, which sometimes is useful. The main disadvantage of using Fourier terms in a regression or a dynamic regression model is that it assumes the seasonality is fixed and unchanging. And if you want the seasonality to change over time, then you uh, you can't deal with it directly using Fourier terms like this. Let's look at a couple of examples. So this one is a simple example. It's monthly data. Normally you wouldn't use Fourier terms for monthly data because there's only 12 periods and you can easily handle that with other ways. But uh, just to show how it works, we're going to start with an example with monthly data. So this is uh, expenditure on cafes, restaurants and takeaway food services in Australia every month between 20, 2004 and 2018. So you can see that there's a, there's a trend that's as close to linear um, and that there's a uh, the strong seasonality. So let's see how we go with this. We're going to deal with log turnover because, as you saw in this, in this slide, the uh, size of the fluctuations increases as the level increases, which is typical of log behaviour. So we'll take the log of turnover and we'll try different uh, values for the k parameter in the Fourier term. So we'll start with k equals 1, which is the smallest value it can be, meaning that the seasonality is modelled as a sine wave. Uh, and then add in a harmonic with k equals 2 and two harmonics with k equals 3 and so on. The largest we can deal with is k equals 6 uh, because that's fully saturated the model. It's like putting dummy variables in for each period. So we fit these six models, and as we can see, the one with the uh, smallest AIC C statistic is actually k equals 6. So we need all of the Fourier terms in the model. Let's have a look at the, the different models and how they how they look. So this is uh, with k equals 1. So this is with uh, sine wave for the Fourier terms. And notice that the ARIMA error is doing quite a lot of work here. Um, so a 2, 1, 3 error, that's a lot of parameters to try to deal with the rest of the dynamics that are happening in the, in the data set. And as we increase the value of k, the, um, the shape of the seasonality gets a little more complicated. And um, you don't see it here, but you'll notice that the ARIMA term will get simpler for larger values of k. So that's k equals 2, k equals 3. We've now got only four parameters for the ARIMA term, k equals 4. By the time we get to k equals 5, the ARIMA um, part of the model is now much simpler. It's, it's only got two uh, parameters in it. And there's k equals 6, which is where we're dealing with the seasonality with a fully saturated number of Fourier terms. And the there's only one parameter remaining to deal with the ARIMA error. But you typically see this as you put more parameters into the seasonal part of the model. You can use fewer parameters in the ARIMA part of the model. And the AICC statistic is demonstrating um, what's giving you the best forecast and uh, including both of those terms. As I said, you normally wouldn't use Fourier terms for monthly data because we can easily handle that with a seasonal ARIMA model uh, or with dummy variables, uh, but it demonstrates uh, how this works. Where you would normally use Fourier terms is for, say, weekly data um, because the period of seasonality is both quite large, uh, larger than 52, but it's also not an integer so that it makes it's not possible to handle it properly um, using many of the other methods that we look at because they assume integer seasonality. So I've, I've tried a variety of values of k, and this one was the one that gave the smallest AICC statistic. Uh, and so we're using k equals 6. 
And again, the error term is a 0, 1, 1. That's just coincidentally. It's chosen in a, the ARIMA part of the model automatically as usual. And notice also that the model includes an intercept. And because um, there is differencing here, that little d is 1, that means that it's going to have a drift term in it. So the, there will be some trend in the forecasts. <clears throat> Um, so if we now go ahead and forecast for the next three years, we can see that the um, there's, there's the increasing trend, uh, which has captured the trend in the overall data. And the seasonality you can see there is um, picking up the, the shape of the changes across the year. Quite wide prediction intervals because there's a lot of noise in this data set. 